Welcome to the Healthy Habit Hot Seat, where we chat to extraordinary humans and world-leading health experts to dive deep into the intricacies of the daily habits that have shaped their success. Remember, success leaves clues, right? I'm your host and resident healthy habit coach, Loz Antonenko, and I cannot wait to help you re-energize your life so you too can create opportunity, vitality, and abundance to become the master of your own incredible healthy destiny. Now, let's get into today's conversation. Today, I speak with Brian Bradley, Vice President of Egoscu. Traveling across the world as a posture pain performance coach and motivational speaker, Brian teaches people how to live healthier pain-free lives and achieve complete fitness. Brian believes that real lasting change can happen when we commit to health as a lifestyle. Hello and welcome to the Healthy Habit Hot Seat. Today's guest is the elusive, the amazing and the charismatic Brian Bradley from Egoscu. So, Brian, thanks so much for joining me on today's podcast. I know you're a busy guy. You've just come back from like an amazing trip, working, playing. You know, I don't know if there's a bit of a blur between pleasure and professional stuff with you. <laughs> no, there's, and you know what it was is the, well, first of all, thank you so much. Secondly, this is, um, elusive. I kind of like that. I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> my business card. Um, but it's because we travel so much because you like you, which is why you and I have always, you know, uh, definitely had a mental emotional connection because we are so passionate about helping people. Um, and I just get the chance to travel the world to multiple cities to be able to do this. So yeah, I'm back from, let's see, Arizona, Sun Valley, uh, heading out to Breckenridge to do another talk. So yeah, we're just a boatload of things to do, but um, my number one concern are the people listening to you. So let's, let's try to help them. I love your work, Brian. And you're always so lovely to be around. Like you've just got such a a fire in your belly and a passion in your voice. So um, yeah, I can't wait to just jump right in. So imagine we're waiting in line at a Tony Robbins event for a coffee. Now I know you drink bulletproof coffee, but let's just say it's a mainstream coffee. It's just a black, it's a long black. And we've only got 30 seconds before we're about to part ways with each other. What would be your most important message for our listeners in regards to who you are, what you stand for and um, your purpose in life? Well, first of all, I would uh, not be standing with you in a line for uh, just a tall black uh, crappy bottle. (laughs) Thank you so much. I only do the mold free, toxin free. So that's the bulletproof stuff. I don't work for them, but I absolutely love the product. Remember, it's, it got me to read it. Nine, uh, and I'm not kidding. Like I went through 22 books that year because of how my brain worked or didn't work, you know, via the fog. Okay, enough of that. Egoscue is based on a person's symptom disappearing when they go after the cause of the actual symptom. So when somebody says to me, I have a frozen shoulder and they get to hear, and they're trying to AB duck the arm, there should be a motion of a two to one relationship. Very simple math raise the arm up 90 degrees, the shoulder blade on the back should go around 45 degrees. So it should look like this. Take it up, this should go halfway. Take it higher, this should go almost all the way up. Well, the problem is when you have a shoulder injury, people are looking at the joint. When you have a neck injury, they're looking at the neck. When you're looking at, hey, my feet are killing me, you're looking at your shoes. When the bunion is formed on one foot and not the other. I mean, this is not rocket science. It's not your shoes. It's the shoe around the foot that you took to the shoe. So we've got to get your body back to a, you know, a point where 90 degree angles are listened to. And that's why we have this logo based on the 90 degrees, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles. Yeah, right. I didn't know that about the logo. That's fascinating. I just made it up. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You couldn't make that up. That's too perfect. So growing up, you always love sport. You're wrestling as every American boy does. At what point did you realize that you were destined to pursue a career working with athletes as a postural alignment specialist? Um, I was always the very, 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 very good athlete. I could play any sport, but I was never very, 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 very good to make 
Australian roles, World Rugby League, NFL, baseball. I, I wasn't that guy. So I just resigned to the point where I'm like this, you know what, you're an amazing coach, Brian. Just go with coaching. <laughs> and so I was heading down the coaching world going, okay, I'm an athletic trainer. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to probably end up coaching. But then I ran into Pete Agoski in 1991 and it completely changed everything when he said, you know, there's a reason why you stand with your feet in such a wide base and your feet turn out. And I said, yeah, because I'm like strong, I'm a coach. He goes, no, because your hips are asleep and your upper back is so big. That's why your lats develop when you do anything. And I said, he's not lying. My lats do everything in my workout. I could get done with legs and my lats are out here like this. And so I was just moving inefficiently. Luckily, I didn't have any huge, huge injuries until later in life when I ended up like mountain biking and having problems like that. Downhill mountain biking specifically, when you bounce off trees at 60 miles an hour, you'll end up having ACL reconstructions, blood clots, broken hip, uh, fractured transverse process, separation, dislocating, bulging disc, bulging disc, uh, torn uh, labrum in my hip. All those injuries came from different sports, mainly one, downhill mountain biking, because trees <laughs> don't move. And the smart part of that is it gave me an opportunity to become an amazing Egoscue therapist because I never focused on the pain. That was my physical therapist and orthopedic surgeon's job. Right. My job was to go, if I tore my ACL, how did that affect the ankle and hip that sit above and below it? And then how did that affect my opposite shoulder and shift my head so my jaw shifted over and I, ro I wore this tooth down. So my dentist says, put on a bite guard. I'm like, doesn't make sense. You're giving me a bite guard to brace something that's off because the whole chain is off. Yeah. That's what Agoscue is focused on. And I luckily ran into it 30 years this year. So what was happening for you at that time in your life, you know, to transition from, I guess, athletic trainer to postural alignment specialist? Um, did you have any fears of uncertainty at that time? Or did you just dive right in? Cause that's just your personality. Well, in 1991, I was, what, uh, 23 years young and, um, yeah, right around 23. And I really can't tell you everything that I was doing at 23 because, you know, uh, I'd probably go to prison. But it's a, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding you. But it's a, my focus was on me, me, me. Because I knew deep down inside, fearfully, significance-wise, I didn't know shit. Mm. I knew nothing. But I knew everything because I said, I want the client to get better, but I didn't have the right information. I took tests in college to pass college and didn't learn squat. Not their fault. Remember, I was dealing with the ADHD and the brain stuff. I mean, if Bulletproof Coffee would have been available back then, I'd probably be a freaking <laughs> neurosurgeon flying to the moon. But I can attest to that completely. I can relate to this story. <laughs> but I will tell you, it's a, I got lucky and switched from symptom treatment, which is what athletic trainers do. No offense, they're the... Number one thing when somebody in World Rugby League or in um, Australian roles, if a person goes down with a knee injury, they're the guy on the field doing the test to go, here's our assessment. Let's bring the surgeon on. Let's do whatever, 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 whatever. They're the first line of defense against that injury. That was me. I loved it. But something was missing because I was so much into treating symptoms, not getting the results that I would like. And then I ran into a guy who is a Marine Corps major coming out of Vietnam, fixed himself because they pissed him off with the medical world. And he ended up starting this. And for some reason, God, whoever you guys believe in, gave him a third eye to be able to look at the body this way. And he disseminated it to me. And now we have, you know, clinics all over the U.S., uh, four international with another 10 coming. I need Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney. So I'm talking to two people in uh, Brisbane. No, I'm talking to people in Melbourne and Sydney right now about possibly opening. So I have to get Australia open because you people are so badass. That's so exciting. I, I love, I love Agoscu. I mean, we've spoken a few times and you've just helped me. I remember the first time I ever met you, you took a photo from me from the side and I thought I had great posture and my posture is shit, you know, and of course I have pain, of course, you know, and this is the majority of the world. The thing is like, I'm in touch with my body, you know, I know what to do. But I think about all the laymen and all the people, you know, the general population, you're dealing with seniors, you're dealing with you know, people with complex conditions and you're dealing with athletes, but you're also dealing with the general population. And I think the biggest challenge is this such a unique way to look at the body. People just don't understand how important it is. And they don't understand the ramifications of poor posture on their health. And how and simple. 
a hundred percent. So you obviously understand the science of success and you've continued to refine that over the course of your life as vice president and, and basically the voice of Agoscu, you tour internationally as a speaker on topics, you know, ranging from improving posture, minimizing pain, and then to enhancing performance. What would be a recent professional or and or personal highlight for you over the past 12 months? I had the privilege of watching the Conor McGregor Khabib fight way back when. And I'm not going to show you pictures, but it's because I don't have uh, the okay to do that yet. Um, here we go. Uh, Connor and this is an article that came out on Yahoo Sports where. So Super Bowl 2020, how the 49ers and Connor McGregor are bound by a therapy method yielding results for both. Yeah, right. Connor, I got him 12 days out via Tony Robbins because Tony's been working with him on, you know, just how to become the, uh, the artist that he is instead of being the warrior 24 seven, find yeah. the magician, find the lover, you know, that kind of stuff language he uses. And everybody knows what happened in the cowboy fight and they all blame it on cowboy being weak. I'm sorry. Um, I work with Chuck Liddell too. And Chuck will tell you, Cowboy's not weak. You don't get 50 some wins or whatever he's doing in the MMA by being weak. It's the idea that he was blown away that here I am, let's go, let's go. And all of a sudden it's like, oh no, 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 no. Cause he came at him so fast and he beat mm. him in 42 or 48 seconds. Yeah. Win because of Igoscu. <coughs> uh, Igoscu didn't teach him how to fight. You're talking about one of the greatest of all time with Conor McGregor. What you are getting is six, eight months ago when I saw the Khabib fight, I'm sitting here in my living room and I have 18 boys in here watching the fight. I don't usually buy fights. For some reason, I bought that fight and said, well, watch it here. Things happen for a reason, right? And I'm watching the fight, I'm watching the fight and I'm going, okay, Connor, you're Irish, I'm Irish. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my God. He's so kyphotic and I am not making this up. And his head's here and he thinks he's gonna fight there which is why in the first round he couldn't breathe. He was heaving north and south versus a real true diaphragmatic breath east to west. Mm. And he doesn't know that. So when Tony said, you remember those pictures and videos that you sent me? I said, yeah, he goes, I think the time's come. So we voiced over some stuff. I sent it to him, Tony showed it to him, brilliantly got him to understand it, which is why I give Tony the credit because all I had to do was go in there for three hours at the UFC in Vegas and say, here's what, here's why, and here's how. Now we're gonna interrupt it and give you the credit. Smartest athlete I think I've ever worked with. He walked over after one exercise, looked at me and said, my hips are no longer tight and my feet are dead straight. Wow. And I said, well, throw a punch. And he throws a punch and he's like, that feels like I have double the speed and double the power. And I looked at him and I said, eh, Cowboy's in some deep trouble right now. And he starts laughing. He goes, what, what else? So then he has 19 guys in his group. So we couldn't change too much because you know it's like changing a pitcher's arm before the, before the World Series. Just don't change everything like that. Mm. But that athlete, I'm telling you, you know, he's, he's world known. Um, he's gonna be a completely different fighter through 2020. I'll get a hold of him again through this year. He's probably gonna fight again in the spring. Don't know that yet, but we'll see. Um, but they're gonna meet again. And what Tony's done with him so brilliantly is I can see Connor honestly walking up to him and saying, I'm sorry I did this, 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 this. And like really owning up to his behavior and then saying, but I'm still going to snatch the life out of you when I go into the octagon. Have a good <laughs> Actually, it's quite funny you brought up Conor McGregor. He was brought up at another interview. I, um, I chatted to a guy called Patrick McEwen, who yeah. has written a book called Oxygen Advantage. And he used the same example in that same fight. One of the best books ever. Yes, I know. I know. Like what you've heard so far? Head on over to loslife.com. That's L-O-Z. L-I-F-E dot com and download my five simple hacks to level up your life today. Now, back to the show. <laughs> so just going back to your work with Tony and the NFL, you do travel quite a bit and you teach people to improve the quality of their lives through posture. Clearly, it, it's very obvious that you live and breathe your purpose every single day by living life to your highest values, Brian. 
who are the people that you surround yourself with in your support network and your closest circle of influence? I don't need to be by name, but what kinds of people do you surround yourself with, mate? I will not hang out with people that, not that don't have my same belief system because I love the discussion. So you know how it is over here. We're so screwed up liberally and we're so screwed up uh, re Republican Nazi side over here. These guys are absolutely crazy, both sides. If you're, if you're that far on the fringe, you're, you're bringing this country down. But when I find people like that, I always go, hey, I just have a question. And then we start that discussion. So I only surround myself with people a lot of times that are in the middle who are very pragmatic, very understanding, very loving, no drama, because I don't have time for any drama. And, you know, I have a kid who's 18. He's a D1 level soccer player athlete. And he's saying, you know, he has the stress of what school do I sign with? Well, what's my answer? Gee, which school should I sign with? There's so much stress. I'm like, bro, there's people that say, how am I going to get my sister to be able to eat this week? I lost my arm in this, blah, 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 blah. You got to put things into perspective. And if, even if he didn't buy into that, I may not have as much time for him, no offense, because you've got to resonate with people, not that I have your same belief, but they're down the same road, helping people, serving people, contributing, loving people, you know, versus going, I'm always negative. I'm always skeptical. I just don't have time for this room over here. So of course you have the Tony Robbins, but I will tell you, Peter Goscu is one of the most brilliant people I've ever met as it relates to shifting people from hope to belief was a massive thing for me to go through when I was learning this training. And it's not about like being an NLP expert or gee, you have to be a psychologist. In fact, I think if you're a psychologist, you might have some blinders on. Yeah. If you give yourself a shot, just open them up a little bit and then listen to some of this stuff, it may really, really help. So, you know, getting my customer to a, a point of, I believe is a massive change and it gives me 100% success. It's when I put myself in front of them going, look how smart I am and look what I do. Wow, I'm so good. That's when my percentage drops drastically because I'm no longer listening to the customer. I'm only pontificating at how cool my stuff is or what the method is. And that's just not true. So when somebody asks me about nutrition, what do you do? I say, well, I don't eat breakfast. I, I intermittent fast. I have for three years. I do bulletproof coffee, a tablespoon of butter, the MCT, a little bit of this. I use cinnamon for this. I take these micro daily supplements for my brain and my, the, to heal the intestinal wall. And I'm in love with CO2, which goes back to the oxygen advantage, right? Yeah. So you look at this kind of stuff and now they're going, oh my God, that's so much information. What should I do? Um, why don't you lay down over there on the floor and just get in touch with your diaphragm a little bit, which is really what I did with Connor. Put him yeah. in a position that when he's done fighting, he can put himself in a position to allow that turtle shell to open up. And these are your main body shockers in here if you've come from Eastern medicine. And, and when you're hunked over like this, you are not in touch with them at all. So when it comes to your experience with people who are really, really caught up in, you know, I guess, fixed mindset stuff. How do you approach that? You know, when we're talking about athletes who might have a fixed mindset, obviously Connor isn't one of those people. He's obviously shown that he's got quite an open mind, but my assumption in your space is that, you know, when you're touring quite a bit and you've got displays on for a Goscu and showing people what the method's about, um, people that approach you with just like no idea what you're talking about or the benefit of it. How do you actually approach that? Well, let's hit it up with uh, what percentage of your listeners would you say are female? 60%. Okay. 60%. Mm. And all studies show that the female population is the decision maker in the house. Like we're, pur they're purchasing, they're doing this, they're doing this. And look, it's just us girls. So let's be, let's be real. Okay. <laughs> So because it's just us girls, I'm going to go out on a limb here and hit them where it counts. Every tabloid out there says you're fat and to look like this supermodel that's on here, you need to eat less, do high intensity training, and you're not doing that. That's why you're fat. That's really what they're telling them. Yeah. It's depressing. And I'm a dude and it's depressing, but I have yeah. three sisters. I've asked this to hundreds upon hundreds of females that I've been around. And then I said, well, what if I spelled fat differently? Well, what do you mean? And I said, F-A-T is degrading, judgmental. What if we spelled it P-H-A-T, 
because it's part of the lymphatic word, lymphatic. So what if it wasn't your fault while you're working out, you're eating less, and you are not losing the weight? So when I approach these people, I want to push them to a point of thinking a little bit, not just, I have the answer. I want them to go, I have the answer, but I'm going to educate you first. I mean, Chad Holmes was perfect at this. Education-based marketing. I'm going to tell you why the word fat is detrimental, and that's why America looks the way it does. Because it's psychological, and then they go to here to do this. Yeah. If we over here and say, maybe it's your lack of movement, and it's a lymph problem, and we can get you to be a hip-driven athlete again, every movement should generate from the hips, specifically the psoas or the hip flexor is the turn-on switch, it's the lights in this room, and then everything manifests from there. Now they have a way out. You can't just say, you suck, and you're wrong, and your breath stinks, and blah, 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 thanks, have a good day, and walk away. You didn't give them anything except for a complex. You have to be able to give them a solution, which is why I think that you and I discussing this after, I'd like to give your listeners something to do. And then when we come back again and do this again, they can give us feedback between the first and second. And then I'm telling you, they're already on their way. So that when I open clinics in Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne and Gold Coast and wherever else we're going to do this, I want people to go, I'm already in love with the method. I know that it works. I'm going to tell my friends and we're successful from game one. And I'm not talking money. I'm talking about building a community that's so far advanced because you're not as advanced as we are. Yeah. Yeah. You are I... so far advanced that we quit listening to our instincts. You guys, I've watched your healthcare. I've seen what happens even in your dental industry and stuff like that. You guys are right on the cusp of going, we're going to get worse or we're really going to start listening and be amazing. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really exciting stuff coming to Australia. And I think Agoscu certainly sits within that realm. So, Brian, can you give us an example of some things that our audience can take away from this interview that maybe they can do between now and your second interview, which will be coming up very soon? Yeah, um, there's one exercise that is a game changer as an interrupt. And it can be done one minute, three times a day, create profound change especially if you're going to go to a workout, you do this first. Okay. And it's a very safe one for me to be in Australia and have six, seven, ten thousand 10,000 people in the crowd and give it to them because it doesn't require a bunch of crazy room. Anybody can do it. Anytime, anywhere, on a plane, not driving, unless you're in the car, you'd have to do it differently. So you guys want to try this? Is that what you want to do? I think so. So it's going to be... Okay, so I'm going to move this so you guys can see my feet. And uh, I want you all to absolutely judge my footwear, okay? So I, I already know what it looks like, but I want you to do this. Uh oh. So here's my footwear. So guys that are listening oh, to the yeah. pod, the guys that are listening to the podcast version of this, um, I will put notes in the show notes and pictures, and we'll send you a link. So you're gonna take your feet and put them 45 degrees like this. Okay. And then so toes toes are touching and heels are splayed out to the side. 45 degrees, then you're going to tighten up your thighs so your knees push back. So the thighs are tight. That's yeah. held while you're doing this. Hands interlace behind your head and pull your elbows back. So your feet are here, your quads are tight, your pelvis will actually feel like it goes butt out, which is perfect. And then pull your elbows back and hold that for one minute. Yeah, right. And then go back to the chair that you were sitting in. And I dare you, I dare you to try to make that chair feel the same uncomfortableness that you felt before, because you're not changing the chair, but you're changing the butt that's being taken to the chair. So explain to our listeners how that simple exercise works. Perfect. It, so this is what I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna use. The, if anybody can, once they, you either put some pictures in there or they can look at the video. I'm gonna show you this picture of this gentleman. Here is a 58 year young. Okay, so this is a, a shot with quite a kyphotic spine. So he's quite rolled forward. And he overdosed on no acetal. Oh, uh, not the no acetal guys. Yes, he has no acetal. <laughs> but here is him 12 minutes of exercise later during an appointment, 38 minutes later talking, but 12 minutes of movement. That's him after. Wow. So this guy is completely straightened up. 
his butt is where it should be. He actually has a butt now. His shoulders are down and back. His chin is tucked a little bit more. So he's not sort of sticking his chin forward. Mate, that's an amazing transformation. And how long did you just say half an hour? That's the same guy from the side view that was 12 minutes of exercise from that position to that position. Wow. Exercise. And this, is, this guy is a 58-year-old triathlete who then says, wait a minute. I'm going to Kona and I'm not even close to what I should be with run, bike, swim or swim, bike, run, whatever order that is, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not dumb enough to do it. Um, so I look at it and say, yeah, why don't we give you a different machine? You have a $10,000 bike, but you have a $2 ass. Why don't we reverse this? Nice. Give you a, uh, the power of your glute, hip flexor, quad, back muscles. So now you can get propulsion when you're running, biking, and swimming. Mm, that's man that's incredible that improvement guys we'll put that in the show notes so if we have permission we have permission to put that in the show notes make sure they take a look at the tattoo that's on his shoulder because thank god he had a tattoo because it doesn't even look like the same guy it's yeah yeah it didn't look like the same guy at all mate that's incredible what a what a transformation so obviously you've created quite an extraordinary life just to finish off this chat today ryan what would be your top three tips to living a fulfilling and purposeful life, mate. Let's start with people that have some pain or people that are say on a soccer team and they're not, they don't feel like the coach is being fair to them or their body seems to be failing them because they can't perform as well. It can go from pain to performance anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. You have two choices in the morning. You wake up, you walk out, you look at yourself in the mirror, brush your teeth and you go, how's today going to be? You have a choice. Today's either going to suck because yesterday really did and so did the day before. So here it comes and what I get is what I usually expect. And then, or over here where you go, it's a new day. How do I know it's gonna be the same? Is there a possibility that my body's gonna do something different? Especially when I add a little stimulus of standing pigeon toed, hands behind the head, you do that three times a day, I promise you within a two week period, you're gonna go, I'm completely different. Like it is absolutely different. So tip number one is change your mindset. Change your mindset because you're applying a stimulus, which is number two of doing some exercises. Number one will change, but you have a, you have a conscious way you can think about this. You're no longer trapped because number two, do the exercises that we're going to give you. And then number three is, ex- well, this will be two and a half. Expect to be better. Yeah. And then drink water, breathe with your limbs, slow down. Um, I love the Oxygen uh, Advantage book by talking about breathe through your nose and don't breathe with your mouth because it's not about getting more oxygen. It's about creating the almost like a negative oxygen so that more CO2 is produced so that all of a sudden more oxygen wants to come in. Mm. It just makes sense. It's the way the diaphragm works. Exactly. So what's tip number three? You've had one, two, two and a half. (laughs) You get an extra one. Oh, number three would be condition it. Um, right. When was the last time somebody looked at walking as a sport? People don't walk anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. Your country being so far ahead, they do. Because in the U.S., we drive in a car everywhere. I'm guilty of it. So we actually drive to the gym 25 minutes to the gym. And hey, why don't you just walk for 25 minutes? So walking is one of those things that if you truly wanted your butt to look better, then get a real heel strike when you're actually walking, but because we don't walk, we don't get heel strike. Yeah. And we think we have to do butt blasters in the gym to make our butt look better. So train for walking and train for sitting. Sitting is a sport. Do your exercises to interrupt it. Then use that body while walking. And it doesn't have to be every day. Don't look at it as well. Brian said every day. Nope. That's one of the reasons why I have a dog. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you today. I'm so grateful that you were able to share some of the intricacies of your life and some of the strategies that you've used in your life that you can help other people with. And I really look forward to our next chat. Thanks, Brian. Behave yourself. Never. Thanks so much for joining us this week on the Healthy Habit Hot Seat. Make sure to visit loslife.com where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Google Podcasts and Spotify so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, 
I'd be stoked with a five-star rating on iTunes. Better still, tell a friend and share the love. If you loved this episode, you might want to check out my book, The Healthy Habit Handbook, available in soft cover, ebook, and audio form on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Balboa Press, and all good bookstores. Be sure to tune in for our next episode for your fortnightly dose of inspiration from some of the world's most successful and healthy lifestyle masters. Remember, stay inspired. I'm Loz Antonenko, and ciao for now.